Hi, thank you for watching my channel today. My name is Sarah and my channel is called Your True Shelf. Today I wanted to change my schedule. I was due to post my May wrap up today, but I didn't want to post it today because I wanted to make a video about the current political affairs that are going on at the moment, <clears throat> about the movement, about the Black Lives Matter movement and about the recent tragedies that have befallen more black people who've been murdered by police officers. So I felt like to not mention that and to just post a wrap up would be highly insensitive and inappropriate. And I also wanted to talk about how I've been feeling over the last few couple of weeks, um, especially the last few days, and what I'm pledging to do to try and combat racism individually. So this is really difficult because I feel like I don't have the insight to speak on behalf of black people, obviously. Um, I have learned quite a lot, even over the last few days, um, by spending hours and hours on Twitter listening to the voices of the black community um, about how they're feeling and what they're going through at the moment and what they want from me and other white people. And I have been thinking really hard about what I can do as an individual to try and make the world a less racist place. So first of all, I never have considered myself as racist and I like to think that I'm fairly clued up on the subject, but I'm sure that I have way, way more to learn than I can imagine. So. The first thing I did was obviously turn to what I always turn to and that is books and I've researched the, there's been so many people who've been kind enough to make lists of educational resources, how we can be, um, excuse me, more well informed about race and I bought five new books, all of which were non-fiction, covering a variety of topics about race. I think they're all from British authors because I feel like even as a Brit, I feel like the conversation is often very America-centric and I wanted to learn what it's like for black people and people of color in Britain, where I live. Um, so I've also seen a lot of, well not a lot, I've seen a few people saying it's really important that we're not just reading fiction, that we're reading non-fiction and that we're learning about real life events and not fictionalized versions of real life events. Having said that, I have quite a lot of um, fiction books by black and uh, people of colour authors and I feel like I can learn stuff obviously from those as well because same as I can learn about what it's like to be, um, you know, a rich person or a poor person or a person who lives in a different country, you know, I can, you can still learn stuff from, from fiction. And so I think it's also really important that we're just buying authors, sorry, buying from diverse authors so that the publishers know that this is what we want in, in our, in our reading. Um, I just watched a video by Emma from Drinking by My Shelf and she made a really valid point that actually a lot of us will buy the popular books, the books that we've heard about, but we should be making an effort to look for the books that people aren't talking about because that's also giving authors a platform, helping them increase their sales and helping have a bigger range of diverse authors. So I thought that was a really valid point. Um, I've also been looking for children's books. So I'm a mum to two children who were six and three and I am aware that I have to put more work in talking to them about race and explaining what they can do and educating them about race. And so I think I didn't really know that much what to tell them, what to say. Um, and so we've read two, well, we're reading one book about um, young activists through history and so I was teaching them from the book about slavery last night and they didn't even know what that was and also um, I read another book from an author of colour about what it feels like to be different to everyone else in the room and that was a picture book and I'm going to continue to read those books for my children as well as myself I have kept a record of the um, 
books that I've read in terms of any diverse features like so uh, race and LGBTQ plus and country of origin um, on a spreadsheet for the last couple of years so I do actively track my diversity already and I'm going to be aiming to well I am I'm not going to aim I'm going to push my diversity up it's very easy to say all these things and not follow through on them and I want to make sure that I'm holding myself accountable I'm going to commit to reading diversity every single month not only for the rest of the year but ongoing and I'm going to make sure when I do my wrap-ups that I have stuck to this and if I haven't stuck to it for any reason I'm going to own up and say I haven't stuck to it and I want to be pushed by people who watch this to be to read diversely any recommendations for books would be greatly appreciated I know there were lots of wonderful lists that people have made as I said um, and also featuring on those lists are podcasts and um, films and documentaries which um, I'll try and link as many things as I can in the show notes um, also the description box down below um, so that other people can access I have donated money already and um, I'm going to continue to donate money again it's not something which is going to help if it's just a, a one-off it needs to be if you can afford to do it regularly to do it regularly or set up a direct debit or something like that like <clears throat> so I think it's really important to continue the momentum and whilst this is on the platform on the world stage at the moment we need to carry on with the um carry on with the movement and on an individual and local level that we're doing there's a protest um, where I live um, this weekend and it's being held, it's being live screened so that people can watch it at home because they're worried about coronavirus obviously and they're asking us to watch it from home so I'm going to do that. The other thing is I need to be more diverse on my booktube subscriptions so I think at the moment I only subscribe to probably, I reckon... 10-15% of the people that I subscribe to are people who are of colour or black and um, again that's not good enough because I'm not going to hear the same recommendations and different perspectives if I'm watching mainly white British and American authors, authors, booktubers. Um, I've seen that Book Riot have published a, a list of about 100 black booktubers that they'd recommend so I'm going to check out their channels, I'm going to subscribe, I'm going to watch the content and I'm going to learn what I can from them as well. So these are the things that I am pledging to do and continue to do. I felt nervous yesterday about making this video because I, I think all of us who are not black are worried about offending somebody or saying the wrong thing or you know people saying well you're not doing enough you're not doing well enough um but as Meghan Markle said it's better to say that it's better to say something than nothing so this is what I wanted to say um my heart goes out to everybody who has been affected by racism and anybody who's been affected by police brutality and anybody who is living in pain right now because of the current situation and help me help me to do the work help me keep me accountable call me out if there's anything that you don't like that I'm doing and um just want to say you know send love to everybody I stand with you and um my heart goes out to you okay bye